Mazenwai Mohare. Uh, this is uh, Rowan again. And I, oh man, I wanted to say something that I thought was very well addressed in a previous video of mine. No, not that video. But I was asked by uh, my internet friend, the Argyle Dinosaur, uh, if I thought baby bats or elder goths were more prone to elitism or gatekeeping within the goth subculture. And my answer, uh, if you have not seen that yet, and for some reason do not wish to see that video, though I do recommend seeing it, uh, Who Are the Goth Keepers? I will link it in the description below if I've forgotten to when I upload this. Please leave a comment that reminds me. But that's uh, neither here nor there. I figured I would also uh, make this own video because I... I really don't think that elitism... Hi! Honey, I am sewing. This is... Oh, Jesus Christ. Thank you. So, I really don't think that elitism is as much of a problem within the uh, gothic subculture as a lot of people seem prone to accusing others of. It's more a problem that, I think the problem is more that there are people left and right accusing others of elitism when the reality really is that it's really not a huge problem. Now, if this is, for some reason, your first video of mine that you have happened upon, hello, my name is Ruin. Yes, that is pronounced Ruin. I speak a little bit of Irish Gaelic, and, and I have been a goth for about 25 years. I am going to be 39 years old this summer. And more to the point, I have been... I have been through various stages of being a goth. I have been a baby bat. I have graduated to elder. Which I do have another video with my opinion on that and who is or is not an elder goth. I think I would have to say that the whole issue of elitism is more one that people like to talk about than one that is actually experienced. Now, one reason that I think some people are very quick to accuse others of elitism is with the whole mantra of goth is a music-based subculture. And that is true, but not in the way that I think a lot of people are hearing that, or maybe even that some people intend it, because sometimes I'm on Reddit for no reason other than mild masochism, though not as bad as Facebook or Tumblr, to be quite honest, but that's another story for another time. So when I'm saying that goth is a music-based subculture, I mean that in the fact that when the, we first start seeing the inklings of the subculture emerge, which, uh, for the sake of simplicity, just because that's where, that's the time when a lot of the most formative bands associated with the goth subculture put out early singles. So let's say approximately 1978 to 1983. Little, nice little five-year span there. So when this was all coming about, goth was specifically coming about, or what, or to be technical, what would later become known as goth, came about as a rejection of the commercialization of punk. It was a rejection of the commercialism, the materialism, it was a rejection of McLaren and Westwood and Sex Pistols and, you know, all of these little, like, punk-in-a-box kits that actually were coming up at around that time, though it would look very different to what it would look like today, uh, within reason, anyway. So it's one of several post-punk movements that came about 
clearly as a rejection of the commercialism and materialism that had very quickly become associated with punk very fast. It was a rejection of everything that punk was becoming, but that punk was supposed to be against. Some went very strict anarchist on this, and that's where we see a lot of early hardcore punk, though hardcore punk as a genre has kind of become something a little bit different, but that's that's where I'm talking about. In this wake of rejecting the commercialization of punk, we had a number of people who were not musicians either, but the reason that it is a music-based subculture, I mean, they were still creative in other ways, but it's still regarded as a music-based subculture because it all came together at the nightclubs that would feature these bands and DJs who played th this music. And as I said, it all came together under a musical format. That's what brought everybody together. And that, honestly, music is what brings a lot of cultures together. I, I just finished a book that I really need to do a review on, um, but one of the characters is very... It's one of the minor characters, and he's very um, confused, kind of upset that his son has told him that he hasn't danced since he left home, that he had no reason to dance, and that is considered a defining part of uh, their tribe's culture, is to express all sorts of emotion through dance. And with dance, there is typically some kind of music. In fact, there's music in that book. There's musicians in that book. There's all kinds of musicians in that series. But that's another story for another video. So when people say that goth is a music-based subculture, they don't... I don't think all of them necessarily know what that means, but I'm an old person. I'm here to tell you that it does mean um, that music is quite important to the subculture, but music also is not, nor has it ever really been the only defining characteristic. It has been immense importance to the subculture because of the fact that it brought all of these like-minded creative people together and even people who you know weren't didn't so much consider themselves creative so much as you know fans and followers of southern death cult and why can't i get a french knot to do what it's supposed to anymore i used to do these so easily when i was in junior high but now i can't so much and so, uh, so then what happens is, you know, you've got the writers and, you know, we can fast forward a couple years and to, uh, uh, the, Le the Los Angeles scene. And, you know, this is where the death rock scene emerged. Oh God, I've got a whole video about how death rock is not a genre in spite of what Wikipedia might tell you. They're wrong a lot, but that's not the point. The point is that. Um, when we go to the Helter Skelter Club, which was, you know, a major goth club in the Los Angeles area of around, I want to say, 89 through 94, 95 thereabouts. You know, when we, uh, when we see people at Helter Skelter, like, not only were the musicians just at home, but we'd see Clint Catalyst and, you know, like, scribbling out poetry on cocktail napkins and beating up notebooks, and we'd see, and we'd see young filmmakers talking to musicians about collaborating on a music video, and we'd see, and these were, you know, filmmakers who were a part of the scene, and we'd see people, like, Shit, Jim Jarmusch uh, started out in a band, and then he became a, a filmmaker. And we'd we'd see people who 
painted and did photo manipulation art like before Photoshop was very widespread. Like I said, we're talking late 80s, very early 90s here. We'd see all these people and they would be united under the music, much like the Impressionists at the salons and cabarets in 19th century France. See the, uh, at, the, uh, at the Moulin Rouge, we'd see Toulouse-Lautrec scratching out his preliminary sketches for various paintings and he would be just as much a home and just as much a part of that community as the musicians playing the, you know, playing the music for the dancers. And it was all together. And this is, this is why I, I say that you know, it does, it is a music-based subculture, but it doesn't quite mean what a lot of people think it means. Okay, Kitty, I'm gonna have to, you're, you're standing on my linen. Ah! What do we mean when we say somebody's an elitist? Honestly, in practice, it seems to mean to a lot of people who throw around that accusation, you said something I didn't like, you're an elitist. See, that's not what elitism is. If I were saying you must be this, you know, you must have this many Susie albums to call yourself a goth, that would be elitism. If I were even giving the impression that one needs to, you know, have at least X number of kill rave punk star items in their closet to be a real goth, that would be elitism. Like, even if just through implication, even if not through direct words. And so when I see people calling... <sighs> not just myself, but also people who I have come to know and love and understand as very much the exact opposite of elitist. People who are very enthusiastic, even if protective of the subculture, but who are all about welcoming new people in and showing them what this all means to them and how to best incorporate all of this beauty and not just, you know, the beautiful looks, but the beautiful sounds, the beautiful, just straight up, the beauty in everything, the beautiful philosophies associated, the beautiful words written by, by people past and present and tit. Sometimes he wonders how, but Clint Catalyst is very much still with us. And I highly recommend you get his poetry book. Uh, if you can't pay full price on Amazon, which, you know, it's really best to, because he'll get a royalty check from that, but, you know, you can it does come up used periodically. Uh, it's called Cottonmouth Kisses. I don't think elitism is anywhere near the problem that a lot of people seem to accuse of. Because, you know, if I'm assuring somebody that, no, you don't need all of this, yeah, then that's the exact opposite of elitism. If I were being an elitist, I would be saying, you know, no, you do need to do this. You know, when I bring up the fact that we have roots in uh, punk and that DIY ethic that has been such a part of alternative subcultures since, shit, since at least the Oh, crap. What are they called? I'll insert the term here. And if you cannot read that, hopefully you've got some um, blind and low vision equipment that will read it in the description box. DIY has been a part of sub subcultures since at least the 17th century. There was, oh, I forget what they're called, and that's what I'm going to put the word in for. They, they, were, uh, they were kind of trolling the French upper classes by dressing in their own imitations of aristocratic French clothing. And, you know, that is, that is something wonderful. But all of these subcultures, like, so doing it yourself has been a part of subcultures, especially those founded on a rejection of materialism and consumerism. 
much like our uh, little fake aristocrats from the 17th century France, very much been a part of alternative subcultures since the beginning, since even before the 20th century. Is it necessary? Uh, yeah, I place a lot of importance on it because of my age. At the same time, I'm not saying you have to make your clothes brand new all the time. I'm saying it could be as simple as cutting the neck off of a t-shirt. I've cut so many necks off t-shirts over the years. Could be as simple as taking a spray can of fabric paint to a pair of jeans, which I have done, just to give this mottled color to them. Do you have to DIY? No, you don't have to do that either, but it is strongly encouraged if you have the time and skills and a couple of two bucks for supplies. Or could you just go to Target and get a pair of black skinny jeans and boots that are nice enough? Oh yeah, sure, definitely. Can you go to thrift shops and find things that are more than appropriate? Absolutely. Um, can you also buy those big name clothes that cost an arm and a leg? If you really want to, I guess. I I personally don't see the appeal, but at the same time, you know, fashions come and go. I think, you know, we'd all do best curating our wardrobes with a little bit more thought, but, you know, if, you, if it's genuinely something you think you would get enough wear to justify the price, then sure, I suppose. I don't you understand it, but I don't have to. But is it elitism to say that I don't get it. No. I didn't get the appeal of Joy Division for years. Like, I'm not saying I hate Joy Division, not saying I ever hated Joy Division. I'm saying I just never could get into their music until, I want to say about five, eh, a little under ten years ago. Uh, it was after I got into the fall that I got into Joy Division, and I sort of was seeing what they were trying to do. Though... Mm, they didn't do it quite as much as The Fall did. Do I see elitism as a genuine issue that people need to be worried about and fighting against? Honestly, no. No, I don't see people being elitists anywhere near as much as I see people accusing others of being elitists. I have seen so little genuine elitism expressed by others, especially older people and even younger people. I don't see it that much. And on the occasions I do, first off, it, it's so seldom something that I actually see. I'd have to say it's probably been a little over a year I've seen somebody genuinely expressing an elitist attitude toward the, about the goth scene. Do I, do I ever see actual elitism? On very rare occasion. Overall, I see a lot of people who, first off, are trying to inform newer, younger people who don't fully understand what goth is. I see a lot of education, basically. And, yeah, sometimes I see younger people rejecting that education and crying elitist, but that's not elitism. That's not saying you can't be goth if you listen to heavy metal. That is people saying, no, you can listen to heavy metal, but heavy metal is not goth music. It had a very di different evolution on the family tree of rock music, and, and yet there are some bands that clearly influenced both. But that's another story for another time. I see a lot of people who might say something that one person or even 20 people clearly don't like, and then the person who didn't like it is crying elitist. That's not elitism. That is a difference of opinion, often a difference of values, even. But it's not elitism. Because I'm not saying who 
can or can't when I'm giving my opinion on certain events. I'm saying certain events can create a negative and potentially destructive image of goth. It's like, you know, trading in one negative stereotype for another. And I have lived through many negative stereotypes about goths. Trust me, I've, I've got a video in me somewhere that I really need to be in the mood to tell the story of being a teenage goth in the wake of Columbine. So, I, I have, I have very much, you know, lived through so many negative stereotypes about goths, and, you know, and when I see one negative stereotype replacing another, I'm going to have an opinion. You may not like that, but I'm not an elitist for having it. Maybe you think things are different now, and I... I just see I just see history coming in cycles. That's what I do. You, when you get to a certain age, you start to see how certain things are cyclical, and you have something to say about it, because a lot of times the adage feels true that those who don't learn from their history are doomed to repeat it. And I think if we aren't careful about the values we espouse and how we live those, we can at least make a not insignificant contribution to certain negative stereotypes that may not have much, if anything, to do with it. But, at the same time, I do understand why there are people who are very, even people my age, who are very protective of this subculture, and to a certain extent I am as well. I've just found different battles to engage in than some people, and I'm not saying that they're bad people. I'm not saying they're not goth for not picking up the same uh, sword and shield as I am. I'm saying that they're a goth who has who, who has chosen their own battles to pick, and we're ultimately fighting for the same thing, and that is for the integrity and values of a subculture that we hold very dear and love very much. Do I see actual elitism in the gothic subculture? On occasion. I honestly could not tell you about the last time I did, because the closest thing to the last time I did, the guy wasn't being a, a true... He wasn't truly being an elitist. He was just being a dipshit. <laughs> he was just being a dipshit, and I had to, you know, talk him down into his place. And apparently there are praises being sung to me on somebody else's Discord over that. Thank you. Uh, or you're welcome, I guess. Uh, and the last time I saw somebody actually being elitist in any real and meaningful sense, I'd have to say it was at least a year ago. It's not about whether or not one listens to heavy metal. It's about the fact that heavy metal is not a genre that was especially present at the formative stages of the gothic subculture, and it's not one that has been nurtured in the clubs that our that are our modern-day Parisian salons and cabarets. Heavy metal is a genre with its own, uh, with its own roots and family tree, and a lot of goths do appreciate heavy metal. Some people consider themselves both a goth and a metalhead. I love Acumortis for that. Uh, then again, he's also a skinny boy with large eyes and a prominent nose, and that seems to be a thing I like. Uh, but that's not what I. But that's not all that I like about him. He does know his music, and again, he's both a metalhead and a goth, because he he likes both, and he's active in both subcultures. I mean, plenty of goths listen to music that isn't goth in any stretch of the imagination. I have a video idea in my head, and mostly in my notebooks. I'm just trying to think of the other couple. 
five musicians who are very much not goth, but that almost every goth I have met who is of a certain age, sometimes even older, occasionally younger, just loves. Maybe not your favorite bands, but there's at least five of them. I'll give you a hint on one of them. It's Prince. Well, plus four others. But one of them is definitely Prince. Uh, one of them I've mentioned in a previous video when I was uh, getting some CDs that my friend Fen sent me before he moved uh, because he needed to get rid of a bunch of stuff to move. Uh, <laughs> trust me, plenty of goths listen to ungoth or non-goth music. We're still goths. Plenty of goths wear colors that aren't black. We're still goths. Plenty of goths thrift and DIY or just, you know, pick up the skinny jeans at Target and a band shirt at a concert. And they're just as goth as people who spend a lot of time collecting designer brands that really do seem overpriced when you consider the quality shown in at least one video that was very much pitching this brand. <laughs> if you're putting your thumb through the fabric, it's not good quality, especially for the price. Hi, kitty! Plenty of goths have cats who are not black. All three of mine are black. Granted, like, one of them found me, one of them was from Voodoo, and this one is because the Voodoo one's old Foster knew I was a sucker, and the one before him, the fluffy black one I had before him, also knew I was a sucker, because it was the same Foster. It just happened this way, that I have three black cats. Um, but, you know, and there are goths who don't even like cats. There are cat goths who have dogs, and the dog is not black. They're still a goth. There are goths who have... Actually, there's a shit ton of goths who have chihuahuas, but there's a weird history about the breed of the chihuahua that I think I want to dedicate a whole video to that might explain the connect the, the, the love that many goths seem to have for chihuahuas on a spiritual level. Ch Hi, yes, you're licking me. I can pet you. Okay, he'll do this. He'll lick me until I pet him. And if I turn and just look at him, he'll look at me like... Please. I'm like, oh my gosh. He's so annoying sometimes. Yes, I know. And because none of my videos are complete without seeing Murnau's ass. There we go. Yes. Yes, cat. Everybody wants to see your butt. Speaking of Murnau, some goths even name their pets after figures who aren't even vaguely connected to gothic music and arts. Uh, if you've seen my silent film videos, you will know who this cat is named after. As, as I've been saying, the, uh, I don't think elitism is anywhere near as much of a problem as people's reactions and accusations can make it seem. If anything, there's a huge problem with people who clearly don't understand what elitism actually is, and so they like to accuse others of it. To be a goth, all you really need, you don't, there's no dress code. You don't even have to like Edgar Allan Poe or, uh, or Mary Shelley. You just have to enjoy the music. Maybe your favorite subgenre of gothic music is gothic rock. Or maybe it's dark wave, or maybe it's in my case, I have a I have a huge weakness for dark cabaret and avant garde music. So, you know, my favorite bands would be Virgin Prunes, uh, Ross Williams. Just about anything he's done has been a bit more avant garde than not. Um, Nico, Tom Waits, Leonard Cohen. I love Leonard Cohen in my old age. Patti Smith, even. Um, to some extent, I could see John Cooper Clark appealing more to goths than punks lately. Uh, especially the albums he's done with Invisible Girls doing his background music. And I'm like, that, that, that sounds very goth to me. Sex Gang Children, 
Cinema Strange. You like all these weird, weird bands. These Swine Lakes, that's one of my favorites off of, um, what's it called? Bandcamp right now. Um, you know, or maybe you like this, you know, new wave of a post-punk revival as the best, or more synth-based music like Lebanon Hanover, where you're kind of wondering, like, okay, is this, is this dark wave or is it synth pop? And that's completely fine. Maybe your favorite band is in this weird liminal area, like Field of the Nephilim. Some music of theirs, it sounds like gothic rock, or at least more like gothic rock than not. But then they've got other songs, like, even as a field of the Nephilim, where it's like, okay, I can see why people are confused about the whole gothic metal topic. But that's another story for another video. You have to have a, a huge, enthusiastic appreciation for the music. And you really should be active and engage with other aspects of the subculture. You know, I'm not saying you have to go to clubs. I'm not even saying you have to be on Reddit or watching YouTube videos. I'm saying you need to have a love for all things gothic and macabre and even quirky. You, you have to enjoy the books and the art that not only had a massive influence on the subculture, and I'm talking like, you know, the 18th, 19th century Gothic literature, I'm talking the 20th century um, authors who were very much writing for the Goth subculture. I'm not even just talking Anne Rice, even though she she learned about her goth bands later and learned to love them. Uh, there's there's a there's a couple secondhand stories I've got about Anne Rice. I'm talking about uh, Poppy Zed Bright before he transitioned and got more into doing um, painting and art collage and beadwork and all of that. I'm talking Storm Constantine, who is not only a goth herself, but many of her of her books have clearly been influenced by the gothic subculture. You don't even have to be pagan. There are goths who are Christian. Look up the band Savior Machine. It's kind... I mean, shit, there was even Eva O's born-again Christian phase, which thankfully she outgrew. Just participate in the culture and love the music. That's really all there is to it, honestly. There's no dress code. An elitist would tell you there's a dress code. An elitist would at least let you believe there's a dress code. I mean, Roz Williams performed in white wedding dresses a hell of a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no minimum number of albums you have to buy to be a goth. You can just go on to Spotify, even just the free version, and look up Skeletal Family or some such and go from there. Just follow the recommendations. You don't even need all the glorious antique furniture I've got. I only have this because I've wanted it since I was 12. Maybe not these exact pieces. Okay, I'm petting you again. But I've been into antique furniture since before I was a goth. You can come up on the wrong side of the Adams Family versus the Munsters debate. And yes, there is a wrong side. There's, there, there's, there's a side I come up on, and then there's the wrong side. And, you know, there are people who are on the wrong side of that Adams Family versus the Munsters debate, people who I respect, and they're wrong, but they're still goths. So, that's it. I, and, in all honesty, I have seen so little genuine elitism, far, far less than I have seen people throwing around accusations of elitism. So, if you think... I, or any other goth, is being elitist, I ask you to take in what we might actually be saying a second time, maybe even a third, and ask yourself these questions. Is this person saying that I have to do X or listen to X to be a goth? Is this person 
creating this uh, a statement through implication of question one. And if the answer to either of those questions is no, then where's the elitism? Well, as I tend to say, ah, bats and kisses, and I do love you all so much, and take care of yourselves. And Slon.